This is episode 69 of the Christian Travelers Network. Today, we will be covering a travel devotion. Welcome to the Christian Travelers Network, where travel stories, community, and scripture combine. Hey Christian Travelers, I'm so glad that you are here because today we're going to be diving into scripture and some of the examples that God gives us about travel and how that applies to our faith lives. But before we dive into that, I want to once again encourage you to subscribe to our podcast on your favorite listening platform. We have been expanding to a lot more platforms lately. In addition, I'd like to encourage you to also subscribe to our email at christiantravelers.net There you will get weekly travel devotions, updates about our podcast, and of course, travel resources. We are so excited to be sharing those with you. And of course, if you join us on our Facebook group, Instagram group, and we're also on Pinterest, you can kind of see some of the things we are doing, but also the things that other Christian travelers have been up to and engage with them in community. If you haven't been with us for the past two weeks, we have been kind of going over the key things that the Christian Travelers Network is about. At the beginning, you heard me say the Christian Travelers Network is where travel stories, community, and scripture combine. Well, we talked about our travel testimony, our story in how we have seen God act in our travel lives. We've also talked about community and how we connect with other Christians in our daily lives and while we are traveling. And today we're going to be looking a little bit at that scripture aspect, but rather than just pointing you back to uh, episode 61, where we talked about 10 Bible verses where God talks about travel, I thought I would share some of our travel devotions with you. If you are subscribed to our emails, you've been getting weekly travel devotions, um, and then they're also been posted on our Facebook group where people have been engaging in discussion over some of these topics, but I thought it might be a little fun for me to kind of hit up on some of these. Specifically, we've been talking about Abraham and how his travels looked like, how he, how faith and travel and trust all kind of interlock in his life. And so we've also been trying to apply that to ourselves. Thus, today I want to kind of um, walk through some of those devotions with you and hopefully you'll find this a little bit interesting. So here we go. Um, Let's look at Hebrews 11, 8 through 10. This is kind of a story about Abraham. So let's begin looking at Abraham. If you want to read along with me, I encourage you to read all of the chapter. Get the surrounding context and things. We are specifically going to look, though, at Hebrews 11, 8 through 10, where we hear how Abraham responded to God's call. Starting at verse 8, it says, By faith Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. By faith he made his home in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him to the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations, whose architect and builder is God. A few things to note in there, Isaac are his son, and if you notice, he would later receive this as his inheritance, the promised land, but when he went, he didn't really know where he was going. He didn't know it was going to be inheritance. God just kind of sent him to go, and obviously Abraham is a story of the Old Testament, and we're reading this from Hebrews, but it's because of the faithfulness Verse 9, by faith he made his home in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents and um, he looked forward to a city with foundations whose architect and builder is God. So he went somewhere that God had called him to go knowing no one and still trusting the builder, the ultimate architect, God, to lead him and get him there. Now, 
Um, with our travel devotions each week, I give you something to read, and I also give you something to ponder. So, uh, something to ponder here would be, in this scenario, what does faith mean, and what is the relationship between trust and faith? So, again, the little section where it says faith is verse 9. By faith he made his home in the promised land, like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him to the same promise. You know, to me, faith faith is, by definition, um, trusting in what you cannot see. So he went on faith, trusting that God had a reason to send him to a place where he didn't know anyone. So faith here just means going with God, even when we don't know when and why. And the relationship between trust and faith, I guess, as I would see it, is that to be able to move in faith, you have to ultimately trust the one who sends you. Um, And so Abraham did trust. And then I always encourage you to share something from your personal life in our Facebook group related to the topic. So the challenge with this one was... When God calls you to unknown places or to do things that take you outside of your comfort zone, how do you respond with faith? What helps you respond with trust? Um, For me, I'd say uh, God has repeatedly called me to jobs that are, are outside of my comfort zone or outside of what I really had desired. Um, oftentimes he has called me to places where I know he's leading me and uh, ultimately it's been really great, but, um, I had something else that I wanted to be doing. And so it, to, to go was a lot of putting down what I had envisioned to trust that God's plan was better. And that could be really hard sometimes. Um, and ultimately, not every time did I go, but on the times that I did respond with faith, uh, that his plan was greater than mine, I saw amazing things happen and I grew a lot in my faith life in the process. Okay, so then I'm going to have us jump back to the Old Testament, which is really where Abraham's stories take place. Specifically, I want us to jump to Genesis chapter 22. Again, I want to encourage you to read the whole thing because the whole story is really beautiful, but I'm going to just kind of read verses 1 through 3. Um, It gives us a good introduction into the story, and um, I'm going to help you fill in some of the holes with this, but it'll give us a good starting point. So, travel devotion number 2, Abraham's being tested here. And starting at verse 1, it says, Sometime later, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham. Abraham replied, Here I am. Then God said, Take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on a mountain I will show you. Early the next morning, Abraham got up and loaded his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son Isaac. When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place that God had told him about. God just sent... Abraham to sacrifice his only son. If you don't know, Abraham and his wife Sarah weren't able to bear children until their later years. I think his wife was in her 80s when she finally gave birth to their first and only son, and that had been a painful topic for them all their days, and there was even uncertainty even when God sent an angel to say, you're going to bear a son, Sarah laughed. She thought, I'm too old for this, Um, but God is bigger than what we think. So to tell him to go sacrifice that child was actually pretty common in that day for a lot of the the idols that a lot of people worship, the pagan gods. Um, They would sacrifice their children, and so Was this completely unfamiliar to him? Absolutely not. But think of uh, the question for this one is when you ponder, why would the journey up the mountain have been difficult for Abraham? Like, I think we often think about, like, what was going through his son's head. But why would that journey as a father be so difficult for him? And how do you think faith and trust played a part in Abraham's response. Like with each step, you're getting closer and closer to potentially losing your child. 
how was that an example of faith? For me, my instant response with this is that it, it is just faith in that, again, God's plan is greater than his own and that God would provide. I don't even know what he thought God would provide in that journey up the mountain, but each step, um, maybe he thought he'd get another son or maybe because he'd been promised this inheritance and children as many as the stars, and yet God's asking him now to sacrifice his child, and, and that had to sound so contradictory. And yet, rather than hiding his child away, he walked up this mountain with him. In fact, I think um, his son carried the wood that would then be the sacrifice. But if you know the rest of the story, um, right when Abraham is about to do the deed, sacrifice the child, God provides a ram, tells him, thank you for trusting me, basically, and uh, another sacrifice is put in his place. And this is a bigger picture. It also is the picture of Christ, where um, ultimately our, our sins should be our death. But instead, Christ steps in in our place and offers healing and forgiveness. And and imagine what the conversation was like going back down that hill. So in our Facebook group, they shared their responses to the following question. Have you ever gone on a literal or figurative journey that tested your faith and trust in God? How did God provide? And I think we can all think of some season in our life where we just felt really tested and we felt maybe even distant from God. Did God go anywhere? No, but we felt far away from him. And how did he provide? Well, I feel like right now for me, COVID has been kind of trying and I feel like I've been out of my Bible lately and I've had a lot more anger and frustration. And lately God's been providing in that I now have a Bible study group where we Zoom each week and it's just friends from around the country and now we get to do life together that way and that's kind of helped me start to see God in a clearer form uh, in my daily life and therefore there's just been a little bit more joy. So the last devotion, uh, travel devotion that I want to point us to is in Genesis 13 and I know we are kind of skipping around in Abraham's story but um, I think these are all interesting points that we can certainly apply to our own lives. So Genesis Genesis 13 is Abraham and Lot, these siblings that are going to separate and claim different parts of the land. And I think this actually applies more towards the first devotion where Abraham kind of went out in trust wherever he was sent. Um, But Genesis 13, again, I encourage you to read the whole chapter. I'm going to read verses 8 through 11 and kind of fill in some of the holes again. So, Uh, starting at verse 8. So Abraham said to Lot, let's not have any quarreling between you and me or between your herders and mine, for we are close relatives. Okay, stop. So maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they aren't brothers, but they are related. Anyway, continuing verse 9. Is not the whole land before you? Let's part company. If you go to the left, I'll go to the right. If you go to the right, I'll go to the left. Lot looked around and saw that the whole plain of the Jordan toward Zoror was well watered, like the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt. This was before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Um, another side note with this one is it looked like the garden of the Lord. If you remember, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and then eventually Adam and Eve got kicked out of the garden. This is, I believe, the garden that they are referring to. Anyway, in verse 11, So Lot chose for himself the whole plain of the Jordan and set out toward the east. The two men parted company. Abraham lived in the land of Canaan, while Lot lived among the cities of the plain and pitched his tents near Sodom. Now the people of Sodom were wicked and were sinning greatly against the Lord. The Lord said to Abraham after Lot had parted from him, Look around from where you are, to the north and south, to the east and the west, All the land that you see, I will give to you and your offspring forever. I will make your offspring like the dust of the earth. So if anyone could count the dust, then your offspring could be counted. Go, walk through the length and the breadth of land, for I am giving it to you. So essentially, 
his relative Lot chose what appeared to be the better land. And then as soon as Lot had left, God told him, anything you see, it will be yours. It will be your inheritance. And this is even before he has his son. And that, uh, you know, obviously to have an inheritance, something get passed down. He has to have kids to give it to you. So these are just some of those side notes. So the question that we were encouraged to ponder was, Abraham followed God with joy instead of begrudging Lot for taking what appeared to be the better portion of land. How does trust and thanksgiving relate? I think this is a really difficult question because sometimes it's not a question I typically think about. How does trust and thanksgiving relate? Well, I think to be able to trust, um, trust kind of comes from not always a joyful heart, but a appreciative heart for sure. Distrust comes from a begrudging place oftentimes, in my opinion. And so if Abraham is thankful for what he receives, no matter what it is, um, he can trust that God is going to take care of him. But if he begrudges that he got what appeared to be a lesser portion, then he's likely not going to trust God um, to take care of him, let alone his follow-up promise that he's going to give him all of this land, how can he trust that this is a good inheritance, a worthy gift for his, his future children? Abraham shows an example of trust in that he goes and he explores what God had given him and wonders in lands that uh, he was a foreigner in. Um, and in truth, Sodom and Gomorrah later get destroyed, and Lot ends up in not such a great situation because even though it looked rich and plentiful, the people there, the community, kind of like we talked about last week, that he surrounded himself with was not following God's way, and it led him into sticky situations. So we're going to share um, in our Facebook group, when have your travels left you feeling like you didn't get what you deserved? Looking back, can you identify things to be thankful for even in that situation? Um, if I share with you uh, my response to that, it would be maybe some of our our COVID travels. Um, you know, our honeymoon during COVID was kind of limited on what we could do because, uh, you know, we couldn't really be out. You had to be social distancing and things. And uh, don't we deserve to have that amazing experience in the amazing community? Well, you know, I can be thankful for the time that I got to spend with my husband and thankful that um, for what we were able to do. Um, and I can also be thankful that in a few weeks, um, in fact, probably by the time this episode posts, um, we're going to get to celebrate with more of our family uh, in a community where things are a little bit more opened up. And very thankful for the health that we have and all of those things that come with that. And obviously, in all of this, the, the point of a travel devotion is to begin to think about the fact that God does uh, talk about travel and trust. And clearly, faith and travel relate. Faith was a big part of the reason Abraham did everything that he did. It's also a big part of how we go about our travel journey. And so when we do travel devotions, it's just an opportunity for us to be in scripture on our own and look at what God is saying to us and how he's speaking in our own lives. But it's also an opportunity to be in that community from last episode where we talked about the importance of the Christian connection and how we're supposed to be mentoring each other. So sharing our travel stories allows us to take those a step further and grow in our faith walk at the same time. So I hope that you have found our travel devotions interesting and if you haven't subscribed to our email listing on our website christiantravelers.net that you'll hop on over there. Um, We look forward to sharing more travel devotions, podcasts, and other faith and travel resources with you there. So until next time, Safe travels and God bless.